Most new cars are already really safe from the factory. Things like modern computers combined with decades of car design experience have made modern cars safer than ever before. But experience doesn't come without making mistakes, and computers haven't always existed. Were cars death boxes of metal in their early years? Well, yeah. So how do we go from unsurvivable death traps to the cars we know today? When the first automobiles arrived in the 1880s, inventors like Carl Benz weren't concerned about the safety of their creations. Instead, these early vehicles focused on more important things, like running around without falling apart and getting out of the poop stream of a horse. Just take a look at the Benz Patent Motor Wagon, a very early motorized vehicle. This thing is basically a bench on wheels with an engine strapped on for kicks. By the early 1900s, more and more of the well-to-do were purchasing cars to replace their horse and carriage. Out of self-preservation, these early cars had some concessions to safety, like brakes and lights. But the brakes was just a stick with some wood that pushed against your wheel, and the lights were less powerful than the one on your phone. For the most part, though, safety was left in the hands of the automakers alone. Some speed limits were imposed, but those were more or less to look out for the people not in cars. With few developed roads and rudimentary technology, these early cars didn't often travel at high speeds anyway. As the technology matured and companies like Ford started to introduce more efficient construction methods, more people could actually afford to buy cars. This increase in drivers forced governments to start building infrastructure such as paved roads, which did improve safety for drivers. But automakers and safety equipment were completely unregulated. May of 1945 saw the lights go on again. The Second World War proved to be a reset button for the car industry. With no cars produced for almost five years, automakers had to fill empty dealer lots for the returning GIs, anxious to spend their pay. In designing these new models, developments from the war, such as improved manufacturing and materials, could be applied to the cars being built. These improved materials made the cars stronger and safer, but for the most part, automakers returned to building along the same formula as before, with safety as an afterthought. It wasn't long, though, until the returning GIs began having families and wanted to protect those families. This led many automakers to begin offering optional safety equipment on their models. Ford introduced optional lap belts, and Volvo introduced the first three-point seatbelt in 1959. After seatbelt legislation was introduced in the U.S., the ability to survive a crash uninjured increased by 40%, and mild injuries decreased by 35%. That's a big deal. With seatbelts, manufacturers figured they had done enough. But a guy named Ralph Nader published a scathing report in 1965 on this lack of safety titled Unsafe at Any Speed. This was the book that killed the Corvair. For a number of reasons, the Corvair had particularly horrible safety statistics. Some of this had to do with a unique design that required underinflated tires for proper handling, but the rest of the safety issues were just because it was a car and cars weren't safe. Nader's book took a deep dive into every aspect of design that made the car unsafe. What made the book revelatory, however, was the fact that Nader exposed the fact that Chevy knew the car was unsafe and didn't make it safer because making it safer would cost them money. People didn't like the idea that companies placed more value on profits than human life, and soon public demand forced government regulations regarding safety to be implemented in America. Two short years after Unsafe at Any Speed, the U.S. government formed the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration and introduced the first Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard. These new requirements on automakers selling cars in the U.S. coincided with OPEC's 1973 oil embargo. While it may seem that these two would not influence one another, the timing of these two events proved to have some not great effects on the auto industry. All that safety equipment, which weighed a ton, combined with the miserly fuel-sipping engines, proved to create an entire decade of slow, lethargic, 1970s American metal wearing terrible, low-impact bumpers. This period of malaise, which is what it's now called, finally came to an end thanks to the biggest thing to happen to cars since cars. By the 1980s, automakers had access to the levels of computing power that would allow them to digitally design a car and model its crash behavior without having to actually build and crash an entire car. Computer-aided design, or CAD, 
led to the development of new ways to meet government regulations on passenger vehicle safety. The most impactful of these was the widespread adoption of crumple zones. Car companies build a super strong center cell around the passenger compartment while designing the front and rear sections to manage as much impact as possible. This is still largely how we design and build our cars today. After a crash, cars can be absolutely mangled, but the people who walk away can survive relatively unharmed. To prove that crumple zones worked, automakers started using crash test dummies borrowed from the aerospace industry. These dummies measured the force of impacts, and while they showed that the center section in the new construction method was sufficiently strong, the restraints on the occupants were not. This led to the introduction of passive restraints, or airbags. Because a seatbelt is always holding you and will be used no matter what in a crash, it is considered active, while the airbag is considered passive because it deploys only during a crash and may not ever be used. The design and testing methods pioneered in the 1980s led to an exponential improvement in car safety that may not have been possible without computers. In the 1990s and the early 21st century, computers would continue to provide the main increase in automotive safety, but now it's because the computers are fitting inside the cars. A shadowy flight into the dangerous wood. In the beginning, computer-controlled driver aids mainly consisted of anti-slip traction control systems. They were primitive compared to modern technology, but technology quickly increased and cars today are safer than ever. Systems like Tesla's Autopilot and Cadillac's Super Cruise are hinting at the future, allowing the car to guide itself using onboard sensors and computers for short distances and times under certain conditions. And the best part is that if your car kills you in autopilot, you weren't paying attention. So you die peacefully without any fear of imminent death that wakes me every evening in a cold sweat from my nightmares. As these technologies increase, less and less human intervention will be required. This will not only make for a more relaxed driving experience, but will also remove the most unpredictable aspect of cars on the road, humans. He ran me over, I jumped on the hood, called the police for me. Okay. Thanks to Garage Amino for sponsoring this episode of Wheelhouse. Garage Amino is an app that connects car enthusiasts from all around the world. Garage Amino lets you connect and share pictures, get advice, and use public chat rooms to talk cars and find inspiration for your next dream build. There's blog posts, historical analyses, concept builds, new car reviews, even parts and accessories. Garage Amino has it all. The app is like a car forum on a stage three tune. It's got a featured feed of all the best new content and the community is super active friendly and welcoming. There's always new stuff to check out and it's super easy to make posts of your own. Check out Garage Amino. Click this big old yellow subscribe button so you never miss an episode of Wheelhouse. If you want to know more about safety, check out this episode of Wheelhouse on speed limits. And if you like safe cars, check out this episode of Up to Speed on Saab. Get a shirt at shop.donut.media. Seriously, wear your seatbelt. I'll see you later.